Good morning everyone, it's Chrissy here from the Creative Eclectic, your friendly Stamping Up demonstrator from Parkinson, um, Brisbane, Australia. Um, hope you're having a lovely Saturday morning or Friday night if you're in the US um, or where it's not Saturday yet. Um, I am really excited this morning. I've, we're doing a mystery stamping, but it's a bit different today. So let's see who we've got watching this morning. I might be on my own. Let me just move that up. Okay. Yeah, I hope people got to have a bit of a sleep in and had a good night last night and yeah. Let's... So who have we got watching and who's crafting along today? Let's wait a sec. There's a bit of a delay. Um, if you're watching, say hello. If you're crafting along, make sure you let me know. Um, so today... I'm showing you because I still don't have my computer back. Um, so all my templates are I'm on the cloud that I can't get to um, until I get a computer. So um, I'm going to be crafting with you and we'll go from there. So let's talk about while we're waiting for people to come on board, let's talk about um, what we need for our project. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a bit of a frog. I sound like Kermit. Oh, I'm not going to sing Rainbow Connection, okay? Some of you will know what that means. Um, hi, Glenda L. Lovely to see you. Hope you're crafting along with me today. Okay, so first up, we're going to need some pattern paper. This is 12 inches by 4 inches. Okay. <clears throat> and then next, you're going to need a piece of coloured cardstock. Awesome, Glenda. I'm glad someone's crafting with me. So this piece is, let me measure it, um, oh, I stuck the wrong side down. So this piece is three and three quarter inches by five and a half inches. Okay. Then we need a piece of white or vanilla. And this is five and a quarter inches by three and a half inches then you'll need a rectangle or some other shape for the front um, and this is around about three and three quarter inches by um, two and a half inches but you might choose to use another shape. I've got some scrap for my um, die cutting. I've also got a inch wide strip of um, cardstock that is now. I'll bring out my scoring thingy. So this is. Eight and three quarter inches, and I have scored it at. Let's see. I scored scored it at four and one sixteenths. No. Four and one eighth of an inch, and then I moved it along and scored it at. Eight and one eighth, around about there. It doesn't matter if you did eight, uh, four and one sixteenth. 
just has to be a little bit over four and a little bit over eight. Okay, so if you've got all your supplies, um, oh, the other thing you'll need is your stamp set. Now, I'm giving you a sneak peek. Um, some of the demos have already seen this. This is the Translucence Floral stamp set and coordinating dies. This is coming out in the September catalog. Um, we used this for the Creativity Now event. Um, it probably wouldn't have been a choice that I used it, but uh, I would have bought otherwise. But it is a nice set. It's not. It's nicer, and it's got. Uh, it's nicer than it looks when you stamp it, and that also got some coordinating dies called the paper florist dies is that right or did i pick up the wrong ones oh i did oh no the proper dies are inside aren't they oh, i've forgotten that i started putting my dies inside the um cases so these are the translucent floral dies let's see there's quite a few different dies there. I need to get some magnetic sheets, really need some magnetic sheets. All right, you'll need your blocks. Now, if you want to, this is optional, you can, oh, let's get started and we'll, you might, if you need to do some, if you want to do some borders you can i use the scalloped contours die to do a border so what you'll need to do is you get your strip your one inch strip right and you get your bone folder oh you'll need your glue and your ink and your blocks i've got all of those so you're just going to score that fold it on the score lines into three Right. And then turn it over so those folds are. So this blank piece is at the front. And then you just get your die. And I'm not going to demonstrate this because I've already cut mine. But this is an optional thing. Now, you could use these scallop contours it's got a nice border in it this is the one I used or you could use the border dies that are in the catalog or anything else that you have so you might use like that pretty one or something like that all right so you're just going to once you've got your thing folded put it through your die cutting machine with the, the die on the very, very top, okay? And so it will die cut all your layers and you'll end up with something like this. So the back, so you've got the embossy bit in the middle section, okay? And it does, this bit will be on the back, so it doesn't matter. All right, and this bit will be on the back. All right. So, will you be die cutting, Glenda? Or are you just going to keep it straight? So, yep, so we're just going to die cut that. I'll give you a second if you're going to do that. So that's just long strip. <clears throat> no. Okay. All right. Well, we'll go on to the next step. Mm, little names all crooked today. Oh, let's just leave it up there. All right. So the next thing you need to do is you need to get your pattern paper and work out so it's best to have a non-directional paper, but 
because it folds, all right? And I'm going to tell you where to score it. So, to grab your trimmer or your score pal or whatever it is you're using, and you're going to turn it on the long edge. And now, Glenda, you'll have to tell me if I'm going too fast or not fast enough. Okay. And whoever else is watching. Hi, Jodie. Oh, you're here. You could stamp with us. <laughs> okay. So, um, we're going to score it at five and three quarter inches. Okay. Then, now I'm using a trimmer that's got a scoring blade. Stamping trimmer has that, so that makes it easy. Then you're going to move it along and line that score line up with your five and three quarters. So on this side over here, you've got around about half an inch, okay? That'll be around half an inch on this side. And you're going to score it again. Oh, you in case you have to go quickly. Oh, that's no good, Jodie. Well, I'm glad you popped in to say hello. Okay. Now, even though my paper, so this is going to be the inside of my card and this is going to be the front. Even though this is multi-directional, Oh, it really looks, I think it's probably directional paper. It doesn't really matter, okay? Oh, your craft room's not fully set up yet. <sighs> oh, you won't be able to use that excuse for much longer. All right. So, now we're going to get a bone folder and we're going to fold on those score lines. Okay. I'm just going to pop my trimmer out of the way. I don't need it at the moment. And where did I put my bone folder? I had it here a second ago. Anyway, so we're going to fold on those score lines. Hi, Cheryl. Lovely to see you. Hope you're well and it's not too cold over there in the North Island. I've heard you've had a fantastic snow season over there. I know where my father-in-law lives. They had, in the South Island, they had half a metre of snow on Mount Hutt in one fall. So that was pretty good. Like my husband's going, oh, I wish we were home. <laughs> okay, so you've got your little flat. So, this is what they call a matchbook card. So, do you remember those old school matchbooks that you used to get when you, uh, well, when you used to go to the pub or the sports club or whatever? Oh, great, Glenda. So, you've got this um, little matchbook. And so, it used to open up like that. So, you can modify this and actually do a treat holder. So now you've got your little matchbook. You're going to um, just set those two pieces aside for now. And you might get your piece of white, the big piece that's going to go inside the card. Now you can choose to stamp on this. Um, I'm going to stamp on it. Um, just because I can and that you can choose to either stamp on it or keep it blank um, you might put a sentiment on it you can so this is a choose your own adventure so I'm gonna put some leaves on it okay now as I said, this stamp set is a sneak peek of the mini catalogue that's coming out. Just 
going to grab some blocks and hope that it doesn't tip up my... Um... I've got my blocks anchoring my camera um, stand down, so I'm hoping that if I, if I move them off, it doesn't tip it. Alright, so I'm just going to do a little pattern. So, I'm using some lemon lime twist because why use an old colour when you can use a new one? Okay. I'm just going to put a little bit of stamping on here just to make it a little bit pretty Up over here this is going to be my bottom piece Because we don't want a naked inside of our card, do we? So, so this, um, I think that's all the stamping I want to do. I want to leave plenty of space for the people to write. Okay, so we're going to set that bit aside once you finish that. Okay. Then it's time for some other stamping. So, um, this is for the front of your card. Now this is my scrap piece. So I might scrap piece. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to stamp on my cardboard piece, background piece. Now you might be um, only using a, you might not be doing any die cutting. So if you're gonna do a flower or something like that, you can just pop it straight onto your rectangle for the front. Now this isn't a hard, I'm sorry, it isn't a difficult card to make. Let's go line it up a bit. So, now this is for my demo friends. This is a mini catalog one. And it is um, towards the back of the new mini catalog. So I've got a nice leaf there. I've got to stamp a couple of flowers. Hmm. <clears throat> I'm going to do a little bit of die cutting. I don't normally do die cutting on camera, but because I'm a terrible die cutter. Shocking. I can never seem to line it up right. I just have difficulty seeing, I think. Okay, so I have got... I'm going to do three flowers, and I'm doing these in very bursts. I'm picking up the colours from my paper and I'm going to be die cutting these. So I have one big one and then I'll do I'm going to do a rock and roll, well, sort of not a rock and roll technique, but a, another technique. So I'll just stamp my, um, stamp in Fresh Freezer, and then I'm gently going to touch the base of it to the um, Berry Burst ink. just to um, make it look a bit graduated. And we'll see how that goes. 
I'll try it on my scratch paper first, see if it looks all right. Mm, it doesn't look too bad. Wipe it off. So when you're doing that sort of a technique, you need to wipe it off between um, stamping because you don't want to get the dark ink onto your um, yeah onto your light ink pad and you go and you huff on it okay and we're going to stamp that on there. So it's got a little bit of a lighter colour. Not exactly how I want it, but I'll just clean it off again. I'll do even less this time. Less of the berry. And I'm just touching it with my finger just to blend it down, tone it down just a little bit. And I just got to remember not to touch anything else with that finger. All right. Yeah, I don't like that one. That's okay. Not, why don't we just see if what a plain one looks like. Got another piece of scrap. You don't want that really harsh line. Oh, that one's a bit better. I might just stick with the lighter one. So it's an opportunity to have a little bit of a play. So how are you going with your stamping, um, Glenda? You've probably done all your stamping now. All right, I'm going to um, just quickly die cut those and wipe that ink off my finger. I've done two fingers now. Oh. Thank goodness for baby wipes. Now, if you're stamping your sentiment on another strip or scrap, oh no, you're in a mess. That's no good. Oh. oh, I don't feel so bad for taking a while then. <laughs> so, got my little, um, I'm using my mini die cut machine. Let's find our. Our die cuts and pop them in. Now I can tell you that this stamp set looks beautiful um, stamped on vellum. Looks very, very beautiful. One of my flowers. On my other die cut and uh, die. So I'm going to cut those two. Now I think when you um, are stamping you or die cutting, you need to be patient. And I think that's like I do everything in such a hurry. That's where I run into problems. Hi Denise. 
I was going to call you a bit later and see what you're up to. Tonight, I hope you're, hope you're around somewhere. Trying to get out of cleaning cleaning the house today because you know you have to clean the house before you have people come. Oh. So like there's windows to be washed and all of that sort of thing. I'm getting out of it tomorrow, but I can't work out how to get out of it today too. Yeah. I think housework is for people who haven't discovered how to crafting. That's what I reckon. All right, so I've got a couple of flowers. Okay, now I want to. I've got a bit that I die cut earlier, and I trimmed the um, trimmed the edges off my sentiment but I think that I might even trim it a little bit more I'm gonna make it a birthday card this time so I need to find another little block so I hope I'm not moving too fast so we're at the moment we're just stamping our Images, however we want to do those. And sometimes when you stamp them and you go, no, nah, that's too big or whatever, let's try another um, size. That's okay. I didn't really think that through. I'm going to think about that a bit more. Um, so I've got my happy birthday. Well, let's just line this up straight on my block. Are you doing okay now, Glenda? I'm sure you'll be fine. I hope you haven't not haven't got ink everywhere like I did. So we're just gonna go tap tap tap, pop out, I'll move it down so I can see it. I like to be right over top of things when I stamp, so this is a bit tricky. That's pretty good. Happy with that. That's reasonably straight. Oh, yep, you're done. All right. Excellent. All right. So, um, I'm just going to finish a little bit more stamping because I can. I want to have a bit of a yellow. And I really don't know how this is going to go. I'm going to stamp a bit of yellow in the centre of this one. So this is Crush Curry. Let's see how this goes. Now, see how my stamp pad is a bit icky? It looks like it's got like a film on it. What I'm going to do to that when I um, when I get a chance is actually rinse it all out and take all that yucky those yucky bits off and re-ink it. So I'm going to rinse it out with water because it's a water-based thing. Let's pop that there. I can't really see it. It's okay. I'm going to put some. On my sentiment, I want to have, I think it needs a bit of yellow. I think it really does need to pop. I 
And I know they are stamens of the thing. And I've got this one here as well. So I'm going to use that. another block here. A bit boring today. So. so I'm being very, very relaxed today. So I did manage to get out of my jar, have a shower and get out of my jammies, so we're good. I'm thinking that might go there. And this one. Might go here. Just so it's got a little bit of yellow on the card as well. And I've rethought this one. And I'm going to chop some bits off this. But. I'm going to chop the ends off. Okay. All right, so if you've done your stamping, it's now time to start putting things together. So move everything out of the way that you don't need, like your blocks and your um, your stamps and your dies. So we're going to move them all over to one, one side and we'll start putting it together. So We've got our pattern paper, which, as I said, is scored at five and three quarters. And then from this end, it's scored half an inch in from the end. Now, we've got our piece of cardstock. So this is the inside of your card, all right? Not the outside, the inside. Okay. We're just going to glue that in and you need it equal distance from the left and right edge and the top edge. It doesn't worry, matter about the bottom edge. Those three edges should be around about the same. Around quarter, eighth of an inch, I think. Quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch. So from that top fold line. So you've got your flappy bit at the bottom and your um, fold line at the top. Okay. It's a nice pretty card. All right. Then we're going to stick our white piece on top of that. Yeah, if you've stamped it, that's good. bit of glue on you can use glue or tape or whatever if you're using glue just use the use the wide edge to push it in surprising how many people don't know that this glue has got a wide edge if you push it in away from the edge you don't get that oozing out the sides because we don't want it to ooze. Okay. Should have had a sharper, should have changed my blade there. Okay. So that's the inside of your car. Is you right with that, Glenda? And whoever else is crafting along? Well, it's like almost well, like a private class, Glenda. If you're the only one crafting. All right. Awesome. So then what we're going to do is make sure 
that when we fold it and fold that little flap up, that this bit doesn't buckle. If it if it sort of buckles, like it should be nice and flat like that, you can trim a teeny bit off the bottom. Oh, that's really lovely, Glenda. I'm privileged to teach you. <laughs> okay, you can t trim that little teeny bit off the bottom if you need to trim that bit off to make sure that it just closes nice and flat. I don't need to because I've been pretty precise with the, my measurements. So we're now going to get this piece here. Now, if it's got, so, or this piece, whichever one you've got. So you want the, so what you're going to do is you're going to pop it behind that little flap. So pop this second section behind the little flap on the front. So you might open up that bit there. And put a little bit of glue or this part here you might want to use um, your seal or your tape runner or tear and tape or something like that. So you're going to pop this up and so the score lines will line up with the edge of your card like that. Okay. Does that make sense? And see, I stamped that too low, but I'm okay with that because I might actually put some put the flowers that I didn't like. I might put them down there. We'll see. Yeah, I might do that. I'll think about that. Okay. Then once you've stuck that bit down, you're going to turn it over. And you're going to glue this little flap down. Right. So this little flap down there. And then you're going to fold this bit over and fold it over the top. And you want to make sure that it's near the edge, but and so that holds it nice and secure. Now, some people don't wrap it round like this. I do because I just think that it makes it a little bit more secure. Like some people leave that flap hanging loose, and they don't put another border on it. I think it needs a border. Okay, so then, are you right with that bit, Glenda? Then you've got some ribbon. And you're going to wrap your ribbon around. Now, I want to have mine on that join line. I could have used another colour ribbon. I was sort of going for a very monochromatic colour scheme and it looked way better in my head. So I'm just going to put a glue dot there to secure one end of the ribbon, one bit of the ribbon, and another glue dot at the other end. So just everyone having a lovely day. Oh, this is such a beautiful day. I can't believe how warm it's starting to get already. But we haven't come across Echo Week yet, and that's usually quite cold. Okay. 
And then I'm just going to put a glue dot under where I want to tie my bow. Under the knot. So I'm lining that up with, maybe I'm going to have to do it on the other side. Maybe I'll do it in the, do it in the middle. So I put a glue dot where I want my knot. So then when you're tying your knot, your, um, it's going to keep that secure, that knot secure. Okay. And hold it so you can. Oh, I've got one really long bit of ribbon and oh, I'm going to turn it upside down because I can't do right way up bows. You don't want to do it too tight but you want to make sure that it's secure. Because oh, I'm doing it backhanded, I can do it the right way. Goodness me, how hard is it to try a bow? <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. So, has anyone bought any of the new kits that are on sale? I think that they're just fabulous. I really like kits, you know. They're just really lovely to take when you go camping. Not that I camp often, but go on holidays. I might be taking any to America with me, but I will be um, taking some craft stuff because I'm doing a class in Las Vegas. So I'm really excited about that. I'm doing it with Kevin and Scott. And so that's exciting. All right, so then you've got your little bow and then you're just going to chuck that in. Yeah, it'll tuck in nicely. See, so that's your card when it's closed. Then you can start decorating your front. Now you might go, oh, I don't don't want to have a um a piece of white on there so you might decide which i'm leaning towards this is that you want to just have your flowers and your stems i think i'm going to stamp a couple of stems and do it that way i think that might be nicer um yeah, so you can change your mind. This is what I really like about it. You just can't go, oh, I don't like that. Um, but you can you can just pop your flowers on. Or you might just say, no, I just like leaves. Oh, not working the way that I thought it would. But it, I love this Matchbox card idea because it's... Um, pretty quick the hardest part is choosing what stamps to use I think I'm going to ditch that piece of paper and I'm just going to put my flowers directly on the matchbox on the card base and you can do that because remember there aren't any rules and then off camera I will um Stem, my stems and a couple more leaves so how are you going Glenda do you have you stuck it together and I'm going to put my sentiment on I know where I want to put that so you can pop your sentiment wherever you like so it's got lots of possibilities this card and it's nice and easy I think it's really lovely and easy I'm just trimming down my sentiment and I'm going to trim it down either side to make it a bit more, a bit smaller. I 
could have used scissors, but I'm not really good at cutting in a straight line with scissors. And I'm going to put my sentiment on there. Just hold tight while I stamp my stems. Should finish it, shouldn't I? Need three stems. Probably should have picked a darker colour, like um, I don't know what colour I should have picked. Probably granny apple green, probably. You still can't decide whether you, you can't decide whether you like it or you can't decide where to put things. Mm. Well, that's okay. Just move things around and you'll find the right spot for them. I'm just going to. It does have um, a spready thing. I'm sure it does. So this is um, stamp set. Yeah, just do it and you'll be right. I'm not going to just cut it in cardstock. That's even easier. Because I can make the cardstock darker. So I'm going to have three stems. Now, I've seen this um, card made with a marigold stamp set and it looks stunning. Um... Skinny. So I need three stems for my card. So sometimes when you think about stuff and it like and it doesn't look right in your head and you, well it doesn't come out how it looks like in your head and you go, hmm, I need to do something different. And that's okay. See mine when I started it, I thought I would like these flowers with it. Um, well, because I don't at the moment have a lot of flowery stamp sets. I um, So I wanted to use something that is current or will be current soon. So, but sometimes it doesn't always work out how you think it should. I love those leaves, but I don't like them with those flowers. So I had to go to a plan B. And so I've got a little bit of time to do that. And it is a quick card. So um, the, card, the card base itself is just the decorating that isn't quick. So with those three little bits there, what I'm going to do is just put them on my ink pad and because I want to make them darker So they will dry a bit lighter. I've got a hair. What am I? I've got a hair attached to my fingernail too. Ugh. Okay, so they will dry a little bit lighter. Come on, pick 
get a better piece of scratch paper, put a bit of glue on them. one stem so that will be for my biggest flower so you pop that on with your dimensionals now I have a whole new pack of dimensionals over here I go three dimensionals Oops, here's an open pack that's even better go three dimensionals might be going out of fashion Now I do this in class too. I will make something at class and then I'll decide when we get to class. No, we need to do it a little bit differently. So it's always a surprise. Sometimes when we go to coffee cake and cards, I haven't even made this the sample. And so it's a surprise for me too. Um, I'm just going to put these ones on flat. Chuck them underneath. Put a stem for that one. The thing is, Glenda, if you can't decide where to put things, you can always change it <clears throat> later on. And um, no one's going to know if you change it. Who's going to know? Pop that one under there. I need to straighten that up a little bit. So, what's everyone doing today? We're going to the beach, we're going shopping, doing cleaning. Oh. I am so not a, a domestic goddess. So not. <clears throat> and I'm just going to pop my little happy birthday sentiment over the top of my stems. It's probably not exactly the right place for it. But I think it's okay. Okay. Mm. Oh, you're watching the Grandies today. Oh, awesome. No, the flap won't be easy to slide in and out initially, but um, it will loosen with time. <clears throat> so, if you want to make it a little bit more easy, a little bit easier to slide in and out, Linda, what I would do is I would get my little pencil and I would mark on each side where your where this part ends. So you can 
Let's maybe slide it in. Right. Mark where that is on either side. Then get your scissors and just do a tie cut them on a tiny little angle. Just a tiny angle up to that mark line. It's right. the tiniest angle and that will make it easier to slip in. Okay. The thing I didn't put on here, I didn't take the backing off my dimensional one thing. And we need some bling. So we need to put your bling and your Winker Stella on it. And um, I've got the in colour pearls, which are a slightly different green, but I think that they will work okay. I think they'll just pop a couple around. <clears throat> you might take my picture. I always have bling. I told you, Jodie, I'm a blingy girl. Look at my nails, they're blingy. So I'm just going to put, put a few bits of bling on because my paper's quite, what's the word, busy. I'm just going to have five bits of bling. <clears throat> I wonder if the sweet sorbet one might look good in the middle. Oh, it does. Well, that's a surprise. So there you go. So that is my matchbook card. So as I said, the hardest part is deciding what you're going to decorate it with. So you can have it. So you have like a strip there. You could have a strip that goes all the way along if you wanted to. You can make it with cardstock as well. But this is just a way to use up. Some of your non-directional pattern paper. Okay. So, and yeah, and it's, I think this one, it's an important one to decorate the inside of the card as well. <clears throat> I might make something similar to this for my swaps for um, backstage, I think. But I've got a koala stamp, so I'm trying to work out whether to use that. But yeah, pick up the colours that are in your paper and use those. And I don't mind that these are upside down because it doesn't... Some of them are upside down, some of them are the right way up. It doesn't really matter. So that is our mystery stamping for today, our little matchbook card. I hope you like it and I hope you try it. And thank you for crafting along with me, Glenda. That's really good. Um, Connie Stewart has made a few of these as well. She's um, who I got the idea of. And I she's made quite a few using a marigold stamp set. And it looks stunning. So um, I think her webpage is Simply Simple Stamping. So have a look at her stuff, the way she, and just type in matchbox card and Connie Stewart. She's got a video of how she did it. She's done it differently to me, but um, yeah, it's always good to see how other people do things as well. All right, everyone have a fabulous weekend and um, a fabulous week, and we'll see you on Tuesday night for. Um, Tuesday Night Lights, and it'll be the last one before, um, uh, for August, so hope to see you there. All right, 
Have a great weekend. Until next time, happy creating.